Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for your word. It is the truth. We do receive it. We thank you for what you're accomplishing in our life. Thank you for bringing revelation to us. We will be hearers and doers of it and see the fruit of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated if you would. We're sharing with you on the subject of the godly man. God wants every one of us to be godly and walk in all of his ways. We pick up here tonight in Job 1, verse 1. There was a man in the land of Uz. His name was Job. The man was perfect, upright, one that feared God and eschewed evil. When it talks about him being one that's perfect, this is the godly man who was walking in the ways of the Lord. It says he was perfect. This is the word which means one who's perfect or undefiled, upright before him. He also was one, as it says, upright, this upright, walking straight, correct, narrow path, certainly. Also, he was one who feared God, had the fear of the Lord. We saw that from many scriptures this morning. And eschewed means he turned aside and departed from evil. That's what God wants for you and me. If we're going to be godly people before him, and a godly man and person before the Lord, we are going to be undefiled. We are going to walk uprightly in righteousness. We are going to have the fear of the Lord, and we're going to turn away from all evil in our life. Verse 3, it speaks of, because of this, his, he was blessed by God. His substance also was 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she-asses, and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. He was a great man. Well, he was blessed of the Lord. When you are walking in God's ways and blessings have come upon you, that doesn't mean that everything's going to be great and there aren't going to be any attacks or problems that could try to come against you. Because we pick up in verse 8, and this is, of course, where they were presenting themselves before the Lord, and Satan came among them. And in verse 8, the Lord said to Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? There's none like him in the earth, a perfect, upright man, one that fears God and shoes, a shoes or turns away from evil. When it says he considered Job, does this mean that God was saying this? throwing this out to Satan about looking at him? No. There's a great misunderstanding in understanding what this is said because there are two Hebrew words here. Here's the first one that you see in the lower window. It means to set or place or if you set. And there is a second word underneath this as well and it is the word lab, which means heart. It says, literally, have you set your heart against my servant Job? That's why Young's translates it correctly. This is what the Hebrew says. Have you set your, my, your heart against my servant Job? That tells you something. God wasn't telling him, hey, have you considered this guy, he's doing great? No, it's the opposite. God was saying, have you set your heart against him to try to want to bring destruction against him? And why would he try to come after him? Because of the fact that he was walking uprightly. He was walking in undefiled and perfection. He was one that feared God and turned away from evil. And the devil was wanting to get to him. Well, you must understand, when you're walking in the ways of the Lord, the devil's not just going to give up and say, well, I'm not going to bother that person. No, he's going to try to come after you. You've got to be ready to resist every attack of the enemy. Now, the reason why Job had the problems that he had was because of fear. Remember, in Job chapter 3, verse 25, the thing that he said out of his mouth, he said, For the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me, and that which I was afraid of has come unto me. At the same time, remember that he didn't sin against God in any of the things that he said, because... This is before the law came, and the law, and nothing is imputed. No charges are imputed before the law came. Instead, that's why he did not sin foolishly when he said things, as we studied Job before. The point being, though, is that the devil will try to attack someone who is walking in the ways of the Lord. 
and you've got to be ready to deal with it. Now, in the New Testament, of course, when the enemy comes to attack, is he going to be able to be successful against you and bring destruction against you? Not necessarily. He can try to attack you. But Luke chapter 10, verse 19 says, Behold, I give unto you power. This is the word exousia, which means authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power. This is the second word power is dunamis that means power. Over all the power of the enemy. And then he says, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Does that mean the devil can't hurt you at all? No. It depends on whether you do what's necessary to stop him from hurting you. Because when it says nothing shall by any means hurt you, you have to understand this is not all statement of fact. The facts are you have authority to tread on serpents, scorpions, over all the power of the enemy. But when it says nothing shall by any means hurt you, that's different. Because it is a subjunctive mood verb, meaning it's a conditional statement. Meaning that nothing might by any means hurt you if you meet the conditions. And what would be the condition? You have to take the authority that God's given you and conquer the enemy with his power that would come against you. You have authority against over all the power. The enemy has power. So the godly man is going to rise up with authority against the enemy, and he is going to stop all of his works so the power of the enemy is not successful against him. If you use your authority, then you'll have met the conditions where nothing shall by any means hurt you. The godly man is going to walk in authority. The godly man is going to take dominion over the works of the enemy and conquer him so that he will walk in victory. That is what God wants. We come over to in Job. We see in chapter 15 something that's said. In verse 16, How much more abominable and filthy is man, which drinketh iniquity like water, why is that? Because of having sin dwelling in the flesh. And he's walking in the flesh in the Old Testament. He's drinking iniquity like water. That tells us something. If you do walk in the flesh and you walk in sin or you walk in the ways of the world, you will be drinking iniquity like water as well. And this means unrighteousness, the word iniquity. Unrighteousness. What's unrighteousness? Sin. You'll be sinning and giving place to the enemy and you'll have all this destructive things coming into you. Well, that's why you've got to take a stand against sin. You've got to realize that you can conquer all sin. Sin has no dominion over you. The godly man will conquer sin. The godly man understands the fact that now that he is in Christ. Verse, Romans 6 verse 2 says, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin you're dead to sin. Live any longer therein. Sin doesn't have to have any dominion over you anymore. The godly man is going to walk in perfection, is going to grow up and walk in the ways of the Lord, and walk in victory. In verse 7 it says, He that's dead is freed from sin. The old you is dead. There's a brand new you on the inside of you. It is Christ in you. And now you are free from sin. You now can walk in the Spirit and you can overcome all sin. Now, if you walk in the flesh, you'll see destruction. The godly man is going to rise up, and he is going to not take any unrighteousness into him by sin. Instead, he is going to walk in righteousness and be obedient to the Word in everything. 1 John chapter 3, verse 7. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness... This is a present tense verb, meaning ongoing, continuous action. That's the one that's righteous, even as he is righteous. You're to be doing the word of righteousness. If you do it, then you will be righteous. And if you're not yielding to unrighteousness, if you're walking in righteousness, the devil will not have place to work against you in your life. That's why we need to put the word of God first place and do what he says. At the same time, we go back over to Job, and we look at verse 34, verse, chapter 34, verse 21. 
for his eyes are upon the ways of man, and he seeth all his goings. God's eyes are upon the ways of man. He sees everything that you do. He sees every motivation. He sees all the things that you're doing. And of course, when it talks about the goings here, this actually means the steps. This is a word that refers to the steps, translated that the majority of the times, 11 out of the 14 uses. So, as Young's brings out, all his steps he sees. And remember, our steps are not in us to make them. It's the Lord who directs our steps. He sees all the steps. So are you following the steps of the Lord? Are you doing what he says? If you're walking in his steps, then you're going to be seeing God accomplish what he purposes. His eyes are upon you, and he wants to bring blessings upon you. But you've got to make sure you're walking in the right steps of the Lord. We come to Psalms 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. There's a way that the ungodly walk, and there's a way that the godly walk. You can't be walking in the counsel of the ungodly. That's going to be anything that's contrary to the word of God. Anything of the world, anything of the flesh, anything the human nature, anything of what I want to do, soul realm, directed life. No. We're not going to walk in the counsel of the ungodly. We're going to walk in the counsel of God from the Word of God. That's why you put the Word of God first place. And that is so important in your life. A godly man is not going to walk in the counsel of the ungodly. He's going to think, what does the Word say in every situation? And if anybody brings counsel to you that's contrary to the Word, you know it's not from the Lord. It's not going to be God whatsoever. You're going to check everything out and be sure it's in line with the Word. Nor are you going to stand in the way of sinners. You're not going to be walking in the way of sin. You're going to separate yourself from anybody that's walking in ways of sin. You're going to make sure you don't touch the unclean thing so you're not contaminated because you're going to be the godly man. Nor does he sit in the seat of the scornful. The ones that would mock or talk arrogantly or, or boast, this can refer to. The one who's the boasters, no, pride is going to bring you down. You must maintain humility and walk in the ways of the Lord. So what's this godly person going to do then? His delight is in the law of the Lord. In his law does he meditate day and night. That means you put the word of God first place. That's what you delight in. What God's word says, because you know God's word is the right way. And you're going to meditate in it day and night. You're going to be thinking, what does the Word say in every situation? What's going to be the result of that? He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. God wants you to prosper. The godly man will prosper in everything he does. Notice, whatsoever he doeth. Well, why would that be? Because your delight is in the law of the Lord. And you don't follow anything contrary to the Word. You're meditating it. You're thinking on what God wants you to think on, on the Word. And you're going to be a tree planted by the rivers of water. You'll bring forth fruit. You'll be fruitful. You won't have any withering. And whatever you do is going to prosper. God wants you to prosper in everything that you do. The ungodly are not so. But they're like the chaff which the wind driveth away, it says. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Anything that's ungodly, anything that is of sin, has to be eliminated out of your life. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. God knows the way of the righteous. Otherwise, if you're walking in the ways of righteousness, he, his eyes are upon you. And remember, he wants to show himself strong on those behalf of those whose heart's perfect towards him. And that's going to be evident because you are doing the things he says. This brings us to Psalms 4, verse 3. But know that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself. If you are a godly person, God has set you apart for himself. He takes notice. The ungodly, uh, he's not going to be manifest himself. He's not going to be doing much with them. He's going to be doing, we'll just calling them to repentance. But the Lord has set apart. He's marked out. He's separated. He distinguishes you. 
uh, the one that's godly for himself. Hey, if God thinks something about you for himself, then he's going to manifest himself. He's going to bless you. You're going to see tremendous things happen. That's why you've got to be godly. You've got to be one of the ones that's godly, and this refers to the ones that are godly. They're faithful. They're following the Lord. They're walking in all of his ways. In Psalms 12, verse 1, a scripture we looked at this morning. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth. Where's the godly man? He ceases, it says. For the faithful fail from among the children of men. That also tells you who's a godly person. One that's faithful. Faithful to walk in the ways of the Lord. Faithful to be obedient and to do the things that he tells you to do. Here, the faithful are failing from among the children of men. And the godly man has ceased. We cannot allow that to happen. You need to be godly and faithful in all things. Psalms 25, verse 12. What man, talking about the man that's to be a godly man, what man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. That means there's a condition for you to be taught in the way that God chooses. It's not just because, well, I'll get in the Word and God will teach me all these things. No, it shows that there is a condition, isn't there? that he's fearing the Lord. God's not going to reveal. He didn't reveal himself to those of the people that are just walking in their own ways and doing whatever they want. There's lots of people that know a lot of facts about the word, but they haven't been taught in the way of the Lord. They haven't been taught in the way that he is choosing. Some people, they, they're making their own way. No, you're not to make your own way, remember. It's not in you for the steps that you're to follow. You want to follow God's steps. He'll teach in the way that he shall choose. There's a way that you're to walk in. And we talked about there's a way that man thinks is okay, but it's not the way of the Lord. You must have the fear of the Lord if you're going to be taught in the way that he shall choose. The godly man is going to do, have this fear of the Lord. And he is going to be looking for the way that God chooses, not your own. That's why Jesus said, first thing is deny yourself. You deny yourself because you want to be in the position of walking in the way that God chooses. Psalms 34, verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. If you're going to be a godly man, you're going to be one who trusts in the Lord. You trust in him with all your heart. You trust in his word. You trust in his promises. And you trust in the things that he says for you to do. You follow him and be obedient. Oh, fear the Lord, ye saints. There's no lack or want or lack to them that fear him. And who are the saints? That's the holy ones. God wants you to realize, again, we see this fear of the Lord. You're to be trusting in him. Have the fear of the Lord. Be a holy one. You meet those conditions. As a godly man, there isn't going to be any lack to you that fear the Lord because you're going to walk in his ways and God's going to prosper, remember, everything that you do and you're going to be blessed. The blessings will come upon you. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not lack, want, or lack any good thing. God wants you to seek him. Those that have the fear of the Lord will seek him because they realize that they must seek after him and walk in his ways, because every other way is a wrong way. Psalms 37, verse 23. The steps. We got these steps again. Remember, you, need, you can't follow, you, you can't make your own steps. God directs your steps. You want to be godly so that God will reveal to you the steps that he has for you. The steps of the good man, it says, are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. The good man, the word good, if you look at it, it's italicized, meaning it's not in the Hebrew, but it was put in there because it's trying to bring forth something about the particular Hebrew word that's here where it's just translated man. It's not the normal word for man. It is the word geber. Geber is the strong man, the warrior man, the one who fights 
has strength and power to fight and prevail. That tells you something. If you're going to see God lead you and guide you and accomplish what he purposes and follow in the steps that he has for you, the steps of what kind of man are ordered the Lord? The guy that's a warrior. The guy that's been trained up in the ways of the Lord. The guy that knows his authority. He knows the word. He knows his weapons. He knows how he can conquer the enemy. He's going to use his authority against all the power of the enemy. And God's going to direct your steps. So it's the steps of the warrior man who knows how to fight successfully. Those are ordered by the Lord because the enemy is going to try to stop you and hinder you. You have to be ready to conquer any attacks that the enemy would bring against you. We come to verse 37. Psalms 37, verse 37. Mark the perfect man. Again, this is the guy that's perfect. He's undefiled. We already saw this before, talking about Job. He's upright. Behold the upright, the guy who's walking the straight path. For the end of that man is peace. That tells you something else. The man who's going to be the godly man. He is going to walk in perfection, undefiled. He's going to be upright, walking the straight and narrow path. Because he's walking that way, God's going to bring blessings to him. And what's going to be the result, the end result? He's going to have peace, which is the word shalom. This isn't talking about peace of mind only. Shalom is a word that's an all-encompassing word referring to God's total completeness and soundness, peace. Health, prosperity, quiet, coming to the place of peace even from war because you con conquer the enemies in your life. You know, when they conquered the enemies, they came to the place of rest. The godly man is going to conquer the enemies and come to the place of entering into the spiritual rest of God because the end result of this man, the guy that's the perfect man, the upright one, he is going to possess everything that God has for him. He's going to enter in to the prosperity, the welfare, the soundness, the completeness, the, the, blood, the health, all that God has for you. Psalms 40, verse 4. Blessed is the man. And again, this one, again, is not talking about just the normal word man. This is the word gay bear again. Blessed is the warrior man that makes the Lord his trust. Respect is not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. No. This is the guy that's the godly man. Many people, they want to be a godly man, but they haven't met the conditions to see it come to pass. Remember, blessed is the warrior man. He's, he's, got, he's been trained up. He's operating in fighting the good fight of faith, warring a good warfare. He knows his weapons. He's using his authority. He's fighting against the enemy and conquering him, confronting him. He's going to be blessed because, of course, he's going to trust in the Lord. And he's not going to respect the proud, anybody that's proud or defiant, because he's humble himself. He's submitted unto God. And he's going to, or any that turns aside to lies, which means anything that's contrary to the truth meaning he's going to only walk in line with the word. He's not going to walk in man's doctrine or anything that's contrary to the word, no. This is the godly man. He doesn't respect anything that's, that's of pride, of, of I, 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 me, me, me. He didn't respect anything that turns aside to lies. That's why we always want to follow the truth and put the word of God first place. Anything that's false, anything that's untrue, anything that's deceptive, you want to have nothing to do with it whatsoever. In Psalms 43, the godly man. Judge me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. O deliver me from the deceitful and the unjust man. The godly man, he's not going to have any ungodliness in him. And he's going to stand against the ungodliness in a nation. He's going to stand against things that are deceitful and things that are unrighteous. You've got to take a stand. You can't just 
kind of let things go by. We have a problem in this nation because people have not, the Christians have not risen up and taken a stand against the ungodliness and against the deceivers and against that which is unrighteous. Remember, it's my people who are called by my name that must rise up and walk in righteousness and stand against all the ungodliness. Uh, the godly man will stand up against it and proclaim the truth. Psalms 112. In Psalms 112, verse 1, Praise you the Lord, blessed is the man, is the general word for man, that feareth the Lord. Again, we have the fear of the Lord here. He delights greatly in his commandments. God wants you to have the fear of God. You understand that his way is right. Any other way is a way of destruction. And that you're going to delight greatly in his commandments. I mean, if you delight greatly in his commandments, you're going to learn them, you're going to know them, you're going to walk in them, you're going to be sure that you're doing them. You're not going to be, you know, just go, going your own way and just doing whatever you want. No, you're going to be walking in the commandments of the Lord. What's going to happen to this guy? This is the godly man, see? His seed shall be mighty upon the earth because they're going to get strong and mighty through the word of God in you. You're going to be a godly one, remember? You're delighting in the Word, and you're delighting greatly hearing and doing the Word. You're going to be strong and mighty through the Word in you. And the generation of the upright, this is the guy who's walking uprightly. He's walking the straight and narrow path. His, he will be blessed. God wants to bring his blessings upon you. And then he tells you why the person gets wealth and riches. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever, because he's walking in righteousness. Your righteousness is only because of the fruits of righteousness in your life. Because you do the word of righteousness and you're walking in it. Under the upright, there arises light in the darkness. God will bring light to you. He's gracious, full of compassion and righteous. And he says, a good man, he shows favor, lends, he'll guide his affairs with discretion and lie with the word of God. Surely he's not going to be moved forever. The righteous shall be an everlasting remembrance. God takes notice of the righteous, see. He won't be afraid of evil tidings. Doesn't matter what's coming. You won't have fear about the evil because his heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. And furthermore, his heart's established. He won't be afraid until he sees his desire upon his enemies, which is their destruction. Because you're going to be engaging in warfare. You're going to be conquering your enemies. You don't run away from them. You're going to be confronting them and with power and might and authority and conquering them. This is the godly man. He's going to be fearing the Lord, delighting greatly. He's going to be con conquering the enemy. His heart will be established. Nothing is going to move him. And he's not going to be afraid. He will see his desire upon the enemies. That is what God wants. We come over to Proverbs, and we've got a lot to talk about in Proverbs, talking about the godly man. In Proverbs chapter 2, My son, if thou wilt receive my words, hide my commandments with thee. That means you get the word in and you keep it in you. You don't let the devil take it out of your heart. You keep it. You're carrying it out. You're obviously, you're hiding it. You're keeping it in your heart. When you, the word's in you, then you won't walk in the ways of sin. So that thou incline thy ear into wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Remember that understanding and wisdom comes because of the application of knowledge that you're walking after and it's imparted to you. We've done a study on knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Knowledge is pleasant to your soul. Wisdom, uh, understanding, and wisdom gets imparted to you because of you doing the word. You're going to incline your ear to God's wisdom and apply your heart to gain understanding. Yea, if you cry after knowledge and lift up your voice for understanding, you're seeking God for it, see? And you're not just seeking, you know, just haphazardly. No, you're diligent. You seek her as silver and search for her as for hid treasures because you realize God's way is the only way and the only way it's going to bring blessing. You're going to get knowledge. You've got to get understanding. You've got to get wisdom. The Proverbs say, get the wisdom and get the understanding of God. It is absolutely necessary. 
If you understand, thou shalt understand the fear of the Lord and you'll find the knowledge of God because God's way is the only way that is right. And as you walk in his ways, then he's going to give you these. He's going to start imparting things to you. The Lord will give wisdom. Out of his mouth will come knowledge and understanding. He lays up sound wisdom for the righteous. And the righteous, remember, those who are doing the righteousness, walking in the way of righteousness, not just someone who's born again. He's a buckler. He's a shield to them that walk uprightly. God will be your protector. The godly man is going to walk uprightly, and he's going to be protected. The enemy is not going to be able to get to you because you're going to walk in the ways of victory. He's going to hold the shield of faith up and quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. This is the godly man who is going to walk uprightly. He's going to walk uprightly in line with the word of God consistently in his life. He keeps the paths of judgment and preserves the way of his saints. This is the word here, keep here, is the word natsar, which actually means to guard, but in a sense of watching over. He keeps and watches over the paths of judgment and preserves, this is the word for guard, shamar. So he's watching over and he's guarding the way of who? The saints. These are the godly holy ones. God's not going to be protecting those who just, you know, they're walking any which way. Many people just try to take hold of a promise, but they're not keeping his path and walking in the way as a holy one, and they wonder why they're not seeing God's protection. Notice, he guards the way of who? The holy ones. These are the ones that are walking uprightly in the way of the Lord. He says, then you'll understand righteousness, judgment, equity, and every good path. Because God's going to reveal it to you, see. And when wisdom enters into your heart, remember, it's coming into your heart by God, giving revelation of it. And knowledge is pleasant to your soul, as you get the knowledge of God from the study of the word. Discretion shall preserve thee, and understanding shall keep thee. Discretion refers to purpose. The purposes of God will, that you have, that he puts in you from his word and, and you, what you gain of the understanding and wisdom, it will guard you because you're walking in his purposes, not yours. See, the godly man, he just doesn't just hear the word and then walk in his own ways. No, we're talking about someone that's becoming like God and walking in his ways. Understanding shall watch over you. Because you're going to walk according to knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. That's what he wants. And what's he going to do? It's going to deliver you from the way of the evil. The word man there is not here just from the way of evil. You get delivered from all evil. And from the man, this would be someone who is doing evil, that speaks froward or evil, perverse things. <laughs> word curses won't have any effect on you because... You're, God will deliver you from the way of evil and from anybody that's speaking evil things against you. He will deliver you. This is for the person who receives his word, hides his commandments, attends to wisdom, applies his heart to get understanding, gets knowledge and understanding, seeking after it like for silver and for pre pre hidden treasure. You're going to know the fear of the Lord. You're going to find the knowledge of God. And God's going to give you the wisdom and understanding. And he will be a shield to you and guard you when you're walking uprightly in integrity. He'll watch over and guard your paths, guard your way as a saint when you are a holy one, a godly one. That's what he will do. So you wonder why some people, they don't, they don't get protected. It's because the enemy gets to them. They're not walking uprightly before the Lord. It means you're going to walk uprightly before him. You're going to be obedient in all things. You're going to put him first place in your life, the godly man. At the same time, he's got to have the right character. The godly man is not going to be yielding to sin. Jealousy is the rage of a man. Therefore, he will not spare in the day of vengeance. You can't be yielding to any kinds of sin of any type such as the godly man, he's not going to be jealous. He doesn't get into a rage and get mad and get all upset. If that's happened in your life, you're not functioning godly. 
He's the one that's going to be spared in the day of vengeance. You see, he's walking uprightly before the Lord. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 12. He that's void of wisdom despises his neighbor. Because he, he didn't have the wisdom of God put, put in him. But a man of understanding will hold his peace. He will hold his peace and make sure he won't be speaking a bunch of negative things. See, God's Word is going to do a tremendous work in you. It'll bring you to the place of you being a godly person that you only will do what He wants you to do. You're going to hold your peace. Instead of saying things that you have no business saying or saying things that are going to be destructive or saying things that are negative and making mistakes with your mouth. You cannot allow that to happen. The godly person doesn't do it. That's why people, you just listen to what comes out of their mouth. You find out how godly they are. Verse 17. The merciful man does good to his own soul, but he that's cruel troubleth his own flesh. That's why we've got to have the character of the Lord in us. The merciful man, if you're going to be one who's going to be merciful to others, because remember, whatever you give out is going to come back to you. Blessed are the merciful, so they shall obtain mercy. You're going to be doing good to your own soul. You're going to see God's mercy coming back to you. But if you're cruel, you're going to trouble your own flesh. Because whatever a man sows, he's going to reap. You're going to get it. It's going to be coming back upon you, and you'll see destruction. In Proverbs chapter 12, in verse 8, a man shall be commended according to his wisdom. That's why you've got to get wisdom. And wisdom comes from God imparted to you because you're walking in the ways of the Lord. And this wisdom here really refers to understanding and insight that he's giving you. A form of this word, wisdom that produces insight and understanding. Because of the fact that you've gained that, you will be commended, you will be praised because of the wisdom that God has imparted to you. But the guy that's of a verse heart, he shall be despised. That's why you've got to guard your heart. You can't have anything evil that's got in your heart. God wants you to guard your heart with all diligence and not allow anything evil coming into your heart. Because remember, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Proverbs 12, 14. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. The godly man is going to be speaking right words. The fruit of your mouth, you're getting it, whether you realize it or not. It's happening. The recompense of a man's hand shall be rendered unto him. You want to be sure that you're speaking right things. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. We'll see that scripture a little bit. But you need to be sure you're speaking good. You're going to get good by the fruit of your mouth. Be sure you're only speaking things in line with God's word. The godly man is going to pour grace into his lips so that God will bless him. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25. Heaviness, it says here, but it's actually the word which means anxiety or anxious care. Having care, worry, anxiety in the heart of man, it makes it bow down or get depressed. It will, be, it will not be strong. It'll be low. It says it makes it stoop, but it'll cause it to be depressed, essentially. The reason is because this is a hafil stem, and the hafil stem speaks to be depressed. It'll bring it down. You see, God's looking upon your heart, and what's in your heart is how he's going to manifest himself to you. And what's in your heart as well is what's going to be released out of you, out of your mouth, and what you're doing. It's going to give you the motivation of the things that God wants you to do. If you have all this anxiety and care and worry in your heart, you're going to be beat down by the enemy. That's why God wants you to cast all your cares, all anxieties upon the Lord and trust in Him. Be anxious for nothing, the Bible says. Instead, you pray the word of God. So the godly man's going to guard his heart. So he doesn't get any anxious, anxiety, care, worry, any of these things coming in. 
That'll make your heart go down. It'll be depressed, it'll be stooped, it'll be brought low, bowed down, and you won't be able to walk in victory. At the same time, the godly man, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 7, he's going to make sure he's only fellowshipping with the right people. Verse 7, Go from the presence of a foolish man, when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. That tells you, who does God consider a foolish man? One who's not speaking things that are in line with the word. If they're speaking a bunch of things that are contrary to the word, I mean, it doesn't, you know, whether they're born again or not or whatever, God considers them a foolish person because he expects us to speak the word that he brings to us. He brings knowledge and we're going to walk in it, hear it, do it, speak it, pray it, walk in it. And you can always find out what's in someone, just listen to their mouth because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So the lips of knowledge is revealing what's on the inside of them. And if they're not bringing forth knowledge, then do they have the word coming out of them? No. God considers them a foolish man. And what does he say? Go from the presence of a foolish man. Meaning the godly man, he's not going to fellowship with those who aren't speaking in line with the word of God. You're going to be contaminated. You're going to be affected by, you know, you can't have fellowship with people that aren't walking right. You only want to have fellowship with people that are walking in line with the Word. That's not mean you're not around them. We're talking about fellowship with them. Verse 12. There is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. It might seem right, but if it's not in line with the Word, and if the steps have not been directed by God, it's not the way of the Lord. It's the way of the flesh. Or it's a way that you have determined instead of what God wants for you. The godly man will make sure that he's only doing things in line with the Word and what the Lord is directing him to do. Not just because the circumstances might look good or it seems like everything's going good. A lot of people have done things and they thought everything was okay, but it turned out it just fell apart because it wasn't the Lord directing the steps. It seemed right unto them. Don't try to figure things out in your mind. You want the direction of the Lord. It'll be the peace in your heart. He'll be directing you and showing you what to do. You'll be led by the Holy Spirit, and He'll be directing your steps. You see, you want to make sure that your way is directed by the Lord, not just seems right unto you. In whatever way you're walking in, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 18, a wrathful man stirs up strife, but he that's slow to anger appeases strife. Don't let yourself get into strife with people. Don't get into arguments with people. Don't get into contention with people this is referring to, or discord, or be an invariant in any particular way. You don't want to have anything to do with it. In fact, this particular word is anybody that gets into any kind of stri strife or in any way with them, striving with them in any capacity. You don't want to have anything to do with it. <clears throat> a wrathful man will stir up strife. You want to be slow to anger. Be slow to anger, and you're going to be shutting down any strife, controversy, dispute, anything like this. This particular word is a word which refers to any kind of contending with people. You don't want to be that way. You want to be giving the word to them, giving the truth to them, sharing the word, not get into contentious ways. That's not of the Lord. That's the way of man. You want to make sure you're walking by what God wants. Proverbs 14, verse 17. He that's soon angry dealeth foolishly, if you got a short fuse and you get angry, upset easily, you'll deal foolishly every time. That's why you got to get rid of that anger. Anger has always come forth because something, it's always going to be come in the flesh, it's a work of the flesh. 
angry because you didn't like something or something didn't work for you or you got angry. It's always going to be out of me, 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 I, I, I in some capacity. You're going to deal foolishly with things. A man of wicked devices is even hated, it says. Don't be ang have a short temper or get angry quickly. <laughs> You need to cast out those spirits and you need to deal with that and look at the why are you getting angry. The godly man is not going to do that. The godly man is going to be slow to anger, as we saw. And his will only be a righteous anger. It won't be coming out of the flesh whatsoever. In Proverbs 15, verse 21, talking about the godly man, the godly person, Folly is joy to him that's destitute of wisdom, but a man of understanding, he walketh uprightly. The more you get the word in you and you hear and do it according to the knowledge of God, the more the understanding will come and the result it will carry over into your walk. It'll give you the motivation. It'll give you the desire to do what's right. You're going to be walking after because of God's influence in your life. Remember, the man of understanding, he's the guy that's gotten understanding imparted from him from doing the word by God. He's going to be walking uprightly before the way of the Lord. So the godly man, of course, is, that means he's going to seek to get understanding because he knows the only way he's going to walk uprightly, it's not going to be him in the flesh accomplishing this. No, it's going to be God working through the word in him working in the cause in him to have the motivation, the desires, and the word is directing him, he'll be walking uprightly in the ways of the Lord. That's why you've got to seek after understanding and wisdom by hearing and doing the word and seeking after the way of the Lord. Verse 23, a man has joy by the answer of his mouth and a word spoken in due season, how good it is. If you speak the right words, you're going to have joy. If you don't speak the right words, you, will, you won't have joy. If anything, you'll feel kind of not so good about what you said. You know you didn't say the right thing. You know it wasn't something that was coming, it was coming from you. You give your opinions, you give your thoughts, you know, and, and uh, you, a person didn't receive it or it wasn't really ministering life to them. You're not going to have any joy whatsoever. A man has joy by the answer of his mouth when it's the right thing. A word spoken in due season, how good it is. And you learn to speak at the right times and sometimes you hold your peace. You know, don't get run at the mouth and think you've got to always say things. Sometimes you can be a word spoken in due season at the right time. This means how good it is. You want to have wisdom about when to speak and when not to speak. Speak what the Word says, of course. Don't give your opinions. They're no good whatsoever. Proverbs 16, 1. The preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. The preparations of the heart. Otherwise, your heart is going to get prepared. It's from the Lord. And then what's come, what comes out, the answer of the tongue is going to be from the Lord because your heart has been prepared. So the godly man is going to prepare his heart. And how are you going to prepare your heart? You get the word in you. And you seek to get understanding because remember, understanding and wisdom comes into the heart imparted by him because you've been walking in line with the word. It all starts with the word, hearing and doing the word. Understanding and wisdom will be imparted to you. Your heart will get prepared. And again, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will be speaking. You'll be speaking with what God wants. You'll be releasing understanding and wisdom, and there'll be anointing, and there'll be power, and there'll be, it'll be, the word will be effective. That's why you've got to get yourself prepared. Be sure your, if your, your answer will be the right thing when it's of the, from the Lord. And you'll be, you won't be a ra reactor in the flesh otherwise. You're going, to be rea you're going to be responding from the Spirit by the Holy Spirit and by the direction of the Lord and what He wants you to do. Verse 3. Commit thy works unto the Lord. Thy thoughts shall be established. God wants you to commit everything you're going to do, whatever it is. Your, your works, your, your ways, your deeds, the things you do. Unto the Lord. 
Otherwise, you commit that you're going to do things God's way, what's going to happen? Your thoughts will be established by the Lord. He'll put his thoughts in you. If you're continuing to do it your way and your own way and you're making your decisions, your thoughts will not get established. God was only going to cause the thoughts to be established in those who commit thy works unto the Lord, that you're going to do it God's way. Many people attempt to do things and they wonder why it hasn't panned out. Because they must not have had the thoughts of the Lord that would have directed them in the things they did. Because the God doesn't make any mistakes and everything he does will always be productive and victorious and successful. Remember, whatsoever the godly man does will prosper. If we haven't prospered in things, then we must not have had his thoughts working in us. That's why God wants you to commit your works, your deeds, the things you're going to do unto the Lord. I'm going to do what God wants. I'm going to walk in his ways. I'm going to, I'm going to follow what he has for me. I'm not running the show. I am submitting unto him. And then your thoughts will be established for the things that he has for you. I remember, just by way of testimony, I acted on this scripture back in 1979. 1979, I'd been working as an insurance adjuster for five years, and God showed me that that wasn't what he had for me. And I committed my works that I was going to do what God wanted, and his thoughts got established in me to, to leave that job and to go to Bible school. It's because I committed my work unto him that I was ready to do what he wanted, and I acted on that scripture. God's thoughts came in. It's like all of a sudden, my thoughts, my desire to be at that place went right out the window. <laughs> ah, that's not for me. And he started putting his thoughts into me about where I was to go and to go to Bible school and the, the steps that he started leading me down to go to what he had for me. That's why you've got to commit your way unto the Lord. Then God's thoughts will be able to come into you. Otherwise, you've got you to submit unto him. Verse 7. Look at this. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. That means you want to make sure all your ways are pleasing the Lord. That means you're not going to follow your own way. That means you're submitted unto him. You're yielded to him. You're going to do what he says. And of course, it's always going to be in line with his word. And notice, he'll even make his enemies to be at peace with you. Because when you're in the will of God and you're following his way and you're directed by the Holy Spirit, God's blessings will be there. The protection will be there, we saw and even the enemies will be at peace with you. We need to be doing the things that God wants us to do at all times. We see over in Proverbs chapter 17, verse 27, something else. He that hath knowledge spareth his words, and a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. When you get knowledge, you'll understand Words have power. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. You can be, words can do negative things or positive things. Look at the words that came and vexed Samson, can, you know, vexed him, vexed him, vexed him, and finally told all of his heart and revealed where his source of strength was. He that has knowledge spares his words. You want to watch your words. And you only want to speak words that are going to be productive. A man of understanding has an excellent spirit. He wants you to get the understanding. You'll have an excellent spirit. That means God will see that because you're right with him. you got the word in you. You're putting him first place. So the godly man, he's going to get knowledge, of course, and he understands. He's going to spare those words because he realizes, I can't have run at the mouth and just go off and, you know, say all these other things because pretty, pretty soon a bunch of foolish stuff's going to start coming out. But I'm going, they've got a man of understanding. He's an excellent, excellent spirit. 
goes on in verse 28 and says, even a fool when he holds his feast, peace is counted wise. <laughs> that means a guy could even hold his peace as a fool. He that shuts his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. Otherwise, be sure the words you're speaking are going to be ministering life and be sure that you want to be sure you shut your lips when there's no reason for you to be speaking things. You have no business whatsoever. We want to watch that we walk in the ways of the Lord at all times. Back in Proverbs chapter 16, speak the right things, do what he says. Verse 25, there's a way that seems right unto a man, again, but the end thereof are ways of death. It, that means you're not following the way of life, obviously. And it says, an ungodly man digs up evil in his lips. There's like a burning fire. And don't be digging up evil about people or speaking bad, negative things. That's an ungodly man. In his lips, there's like a burning fire. It will release negative, evil things. That's why you want to be sure you speak right words and have your motivation for, towards right things. You're not going to be trying to dig up evil. You don't think negatives about people. You don't, you know, be st uh, thinking things that you have no business thinking. If it's not going to be thinking on good things, you don't want to be thinking on it. Proverbs 18, 12. Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty. Lift it up. And before honor is humility. So the godly man understands you can't let any pride get a hold of you. Pride leads to destruction. Pride goes before a fall. You want to be honored? You get humble. You have humility. God know, the godly man knows pride in the heart will always bring destruction, so you've got to get rid of it. You've got to get rid of this prideful, any prideful attitudes and make sure that you are humble before the Lord. As we mentioned before about the tongue, Verse 20, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and the increase of his lips shall he be filled. The godly man understands that he's got to make the right words coming out of his mouth. The increase of his lips with the right things is going to be filled with good things. You're going to get the fruit of your mouth. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You're going to eat it whatever you get. You speak the wrong things, you speak death, you're going to have the fruit of it. You're going to be seeing the destructive effect of it in your life. Because whatever a man sows, he is going to reap. In Proverbs chapter 19, we come to verse 21. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. That tells us something. The word devices refers to thoughts, plans, purposes. There may be many thoughts, plans, purposes that you have in your heart, but the counsel of the Lord is what you got to get. The counsel of the Lord, His purposes, that is what is going to stand or stand up. That's what's going to rise up and stand up and show you it's the right thing. Something that stands, it really means to arise or to stand up, it'll get accomplished. In other words, you got to make sure that whatever plans, purposes, and thoughts that are in your heart, you don't make the mistake and ignore the counsel of the Lord because that is what's going to stand up. That is what is going to produce results and get accomplished in your life. So the godly man knows this, and he's going to have to, he's going to really, he's going to watch the thoughts and things that are coming out of the inside of him and make sure that he's only getting the counsel in the direction of the Lord, because that's the only thing that's going to produce results. We come to chapter 20, verse 3. It's honor for a man to cease from strife, but every fool will be meddling now, we can't be doing that. Get, he gets in contention, see. He calls anybody that gets in contention as foolish. It's foolish. A man should cease from any kind of strife, dispute, quarrel, controversy, anything like this. You don't want to get into that. It's a mistake. 
it's honor for you to cease. Make sure you don't allow that to happen in your life. In verse 6, most men proclaim everyone his own goodness. Again, they're speaking from themselves. But a faithful man who can find, because God's wanting you, to, he's looking at you to find out, are you faithful? Are you godly? Are you walking in his ways? The faithful man, that's what he's looking for. The faithful man is the one that abounds with blessings, the Bible talks about. <laughs> that's what he will bring forth for you if you're faithful to do what he wants you to do. Proverbs 28, 20, a faithful man shall abound with blessings. He's looking for you to be faithful. A faithful is one who's trustworthy, one who's firm, one who's steadfast, one who carries things out. God sees you, you've got a track record. You're consistent. You're not on one day and off the next and up here and down over here and speaking the right thing one minute and then over here you're, you're all over the place. No. The faithful man, he's a consistent one. He's one who you can count on. This guy, this guy's steadfast. He's, he's steadfast in what he's doing. He abounds with blessings. This is what God is looking for. Back to Proverbs 21. Verse 16, we're looking at the godly man and all the care, things that are important for you to see God accomplish what he wants because when you're godly, you're going to be blessed, you're going to be fruitful, you're going to be victorious, you're going to be protected, you're going to see the promises of God, you're going to have victory in your life. And you'll see God manifest himself mightily. Proverbs 21, 16. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. <laughs> He's in trouble. You can't be wandering out of the way of understanding. If you get understanding, make sure that it's your lifestyle. It's the way you're going to walk. You got the understanding because of the knowledge of God and imparted to you. We're doing it. And then you go off in another direction. God says you're now in the congregation of the dead. You're going to be seeing destruction coming at you. Don't let yourself wander, go astray, err, get out from under the Word of God. Make sure the godly man, see, he's going to be consistent, see. Otherwise, you'll be out in the congregation of the dead. <laughs> That's the ones that are going to see destruction instead of the ones that are following the way of the Lord. Verse 17, He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. And he that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. Loving pleasure. That means, you please me, please me. Basically, you're operating in the flesh. And you want things for yourself. He's going to be a poor man. God's not going to bless you. You're not going to be blessed. You live unto God, see. You're not going to be a pleasure seeker. He that loveth wine and oil, what's this talking about? Wine and oil were their crops that would produce prosperity. The guy who's loving all this wine and all this oil, he wants to get all this stuff. It says he'll not be rich. Why? What's the problem? It's his motivation. His motivation is he wants all these things to gain riches. Instead of loving the Lord and letting God prosper, and God will bring riches to you, but the guy who's loving all these things, he's not going to be rich. What it's talking about is your motivation. Your motivation should be to serve the Lord and let him prosper your ways instead of you just making yourself rich. The guy loving all this stuff. Prosperity. So the godly man knows the motivation and attitude of heart's important. He can't be loving pleasure. He's going to be poor. He can't be loving the prosperity from getting all these things. Instead, he wants to follow God, and God will bring all these blessings, and you will be prospered. God wants to prosper you, but it's when you're following the Lord. Doing things his way. See, what's the world out doing? They're chasing money and things. All, that's all they do. That's their God, you know. So they're chasing after. It's not saying you don't work and you work prospers to work your hands, which you will, but it's talking about the motivation of heart. What are you really loving after? 
You can't be one of these ones. See, it even talks about this over in uh, it's not this one. It's uh, uh, let's see, is it? I'm trying to remember where it, when it was at. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, 2 Timothy 3. In the last days, perilous times will come. And it speaks these guys are lovers of their own selves. This shows their motivation. They're covetous. They're all, all a bunch of self. This is their total motivation. And it talks about these guys being lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. It shows the motivation. Uh, lovers of riches and lovers of all this stuff. It shows the wrong motivation. You need to be a lover of God. And when you're a lover of God and walk in His ways, God will prosper you and bless you. These are the ones that are all, these are the ones that in the last days, it says, these are the ones that are, that are making mistakes. They're not following the way of the Lord. Also, God wants you to be wise in your spending habits and what you spend money on. Proverbs 22 Verse 7. The rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. He's a slave, actually, to the lender. That doesn't mean you can't borrow. What it's talking about is the fact that, yeah, you might borrow, but you don't want to stay in that state. You want to get it paid off. Because do you own anything? You don't own anything until you own it free and clear. The borrow, he is a servant or actually a slave to the lender. You've got to make sure that you make those payments, otherwise it's gone. This is why God wants you to be wise. Learn to pay things off as quickly as possible. Learn to try not to buy things and build all, all this credit card debt. So many people have gone, gone to all kind of destructive effects in their life because of having mountains of credit card debt. They buy everything on credit. No. You should seek to want to own things. God will prosper the work of your hands and he'll bless you and bring you to the place you want to own things clear. So you don't have to. You know, nobody can take anything away from you because... You own it. You certainly encourage you to do what you can to get out of debt. Again, your certain things, house, cars, maybe you can't buy them outright. But nonetheless, if you do buy them, seek to get them paid off quickly. Like the guy who buys a house, if he's smart, 30-year mortgage, he looks at the principal and interest, He's not just going to pay the same payment every time because they tell you to pay the same payment. Because if he looks at the, in, the, the thing that's set, the bank sets, there'll be a whole lot for interest and there'll be a little bit for principal at the beginning. And so what's the smart thing to do? Pay your first payment with a whole lot of interest which you pay and you've got a little bit of principal. But then, if you can, Pay about 10 more payments of all that little amount of principal. You just skipped 11, 10 or 11 payments because you paid down. Otherwise, you can pay off your house or pay off cars or pay off things quickly if you'll pay the interest and principal on those to advance. As you pay that principal down, you're advancing quickly. And you can, that's how people... 30-year mortgages, they pay them all in 15 years or 10 years or even five years, depending upon what they do, because you want to be wise and get these things paid for. You don't have to follow, because you know, you know how the payment schedules are. What are they? You're going to pay all this interest forever, and then you won't be paying a small bit of interest until you get down to the end. And you thought, well, I've been paying on this. How come I don't have more uh, uh, principal, you know, equity in this thing? Because the banks, are, they're going to want all their money up front. 
and you're getting a very small amount of your equity, only what they have to put in there. And so you're, you're going to end up just following that. But you can pay things off quickly. That's with cars. That's with houses, if you're wise, and learn to do these kind of things. You want to get yourself out of debt, especially in the days that we're in. You never know what kind of financial climates might be down the road. You want to definitely, especially with the, look at the people out there in the political world, the business world, and all the, the globalists and all these people, all the things that they're doing. You want to get yourself sound financially. Proverbs 22, verse 24. The godly man. Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go. That means, am I going to be a friend to someone who's angry? No. A furious man, someone who's a rager, you don't even want to have anything to do with them. Outside of preaching the gospel and calling them to repentance, encourage the person to deal with it. Now, if you've had problems with anger or problem with even being furious at times, get after those spirits and cast them out. Get everything dealt with in your life for why these things are. God wants to deliver you and set you free, and you can get free of it. He doesn't want these things to happen any for more in your life. Why is this important? Lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. It'll get a snare to your soul, and you will be in bondage. We see in chapter 22, verse 29, See, and thou a man diligent in his business, He'll stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean or insignificant, low, obscure people. That means God's going to exalt you if you're diligent in your business, in your occupation, in your work, or whatever you do. We talked about this even this morning. Be diligent in all the things you do. Make sure that you are getting things accomplished. Don't be lazy, slothful, procrastinating, not doing what you should be doing in whatever kind of business that you might have. Be diligent. God will prosper and bless you if you're diligent and you'll get things accomplished. You know, when you get things accomplished, it's sweet to the soul, the Bible says, because you're getting things done. If you aren't getting things done, you're not too, your soul's kind of messed up. You, you know that things aren't getting accomplished the way they should. That's not going to be the godly. The godly man's going to be diligent and get things done. Get things accomplished. That's what he wants for you. Proverbs 23, 21. The drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. You got a problem with drunkard? Shouldn't be drinking any alcohol. We've already talked about that in a series we did. Or a glutton or with food? You need to get rid of it. The spirits from alcohol and from gluttony will take you down to poverty. Poverty spirits come into you. The godly man's not going to be a drunkard or glutton or addictive compulsive one. No, he knows he's going to come. Or drowsy, you know, drowsy's a guy who's uh, lazy and, and just not doing the things he should be doing. He's going to be brought down to poverty. Otherwise, we're going to correct these problems. Proverbs 20, 24, 5, a wise man is strong. And this is the gay bear, the wise warrior, strong. He gets strong, strength. And a man of knowledge, he increases his strength. And this is the word koak, manifesting a strength that manifests power. It's the Hebrew word koak. So you got to get wisdom. And wisdom's going to come to who? The ones that are hearers and doers of the word, and they're going to be trained up as a strong man, a warrior man. The stronger you get and the more effective you are in spiritual warfare and wisdom imparted to you because of you doing the word and conquering the enemies, that produces strength and might in you. And the more you, of course, get knowledge, you are increasing manifest power to come forth out of you. So the godly man, he knows, hey, I'm going to get the word of God. I'm going I'm to engage in the warfare. Those people that don't want to engage in warfare and get mighty and strong, and huh, 
they're never going to become spiritually strong. Because, you know, the devil will come to take the word out of your heart. And if you don't get, engage in the warfare and conquer the enemy's attacks and, and start overcoming everything and casting out the demons that are warring against you and conquer them, how are you ever going to get to the place of being strong and mighty? You won't. That's why the ones that get strong and mighty are the ones that go through deliverance and get set free from bondages in their life. And they come to the place of having wisdom. They become warriors. You've got to become a warrior to see things come to pass. That's why he says, fight the good of fight, a fight of faith, and war, good warfare, to enter into what God has for you. Another thing we see, the godly man. Say not, I will do so to him as he has done to me. I'll render to the man according to his work. That's retaliation. <laughs> We're not going to retaliate. Don't retaliate against anybody. Give them what they have need of. Bless those that curse you. Do good to those that have done evil. Pray for those that have persecuted or used you. Love your enemies. Remember the New Testament? We're not going to be retaliatory. You be retaliatory, and you're going to be in trouble. Then we come to verse 30. I went by the field of the slothful, and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. The guy that's lazy. Well, that tells you something. If you're lazy, are you going to get understanding from God? No. You're going to only get understanding because you walk in and do the knowledge. You do what the Word says. Knowledge will bring forth and impart. When you walk in it and get for the fruit from doing the Word, it will bring the impartation of knowledge, of, of un understanding to you. Now, what happens to the guy who is slothful and he doesn't have the spiritual understanding? Though it's grown all over thorns and nettles, covered the face thereof, the stone wall thereof is broken down. Everything gets broken down in your life without it. I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. Little sleep, little slumber, little folding of the hands to sleep. That's a guy that he loves sleep. Social thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want or lack as an armed man just comes suddenly on you. Because of not being diligent to do the things that you should do. You see, consistency of doing things is important. Proverbs 6, verse 6, look at it, it says about the ant. Go to the ant, thou sluggard, lazy, sluggish one. Anybody ever see an ant sitting still? No, they're always going, 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 like energizer bunnies or something. They're always doing stuff, aren't they? Working. Consider her ways and be wise. Having no guide, overseer, or ruler, nobody to tell them what to do. Provides her meat in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. They're working and does things at the right times, knows what to do to see everything come to pass. That's what God wants. How long shall thou sleep, O sluggard? When will thou rise out of thy sleep? We cannot be lazy and slothful, sluggish. He wants you diligent. Say, well, I never feel like doing anything. Well, that's the flesh running you. Don't listen to the flesh. Get up there and start doing the things that God wants you. Your flesh will get in line. You never feel like praying. You never feel like getting in the Word. You never feel like doing things. But you get up and you, God says to do it, and you start doing things, and you, pretty, you get in the flow. You start doing things, and you, you, you won't be in that shape any longer. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding the hands to sleep. Again, the poverty will come as one that travels by one as an armed man. Suddenly showing up, it will come and manifest in a person's life. A couple more scriptures and we'll stop for this evening. But Proverbs 25, 19. Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of troubles like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. Don't have confidence in anybody that hasn't proven themselves to be a faithful person. Otherwise, if they don't have a track record, am I going to put confidence in someone that doesn't have a track record of carrying things out? No way. Think of anybody in business. Do they promote anybody that doesn't have a good track record and being faithful in what he's doing? No. You don't, in confidence in that, in a time of trouble, 
He's not going to be there for you like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. Uh, it's, you're not going to get anywhere. You want to make sure that you're only having confidence in those people that show forth worthy of confidence because of the fruitfulness in their life. We also see over in verse 28. He that hath no rule over his own spirits like a city that's broken down and without walls. When it talks about rule here, it says this means no restraint or control. If you don't have restraint and control, you're just like a city that's broken down and without walls. Without walls, it means it has no protection. Because what does that mean? If you don't have any control and restraint spiritually, uh, you're running around in the flesh. You're going to give place to the devil left and right. You'll be following whatever wind blows. You'll be broken down and without walls. The godly man knows he's got to have restraint. He's got to be temperate in all things. He's got to have self-control. Otherwise, he's going to get broken down. Who's going to come and break you down? The enemy. The devil will come in because... You aren't having control, or not temperate in all things. That's the only way you can be able to, you have to keep the flesh under. And you'll be without protection. And the enemy will be able to come in and bring destruction. A lot of things that we see about the godly man, the things that a, what a, a godly man will, will see victory when he does the right things. Certainly you have to have the fear of the Lord. You've got to get the knowledge of God. You've got to get understanding and wisdom by doing the Word. You've got to be doing things under the Lord. You can't be doing it in what seems right in your own sight. You want to get the direction of the Lord. You ought to, of course, be holy, righteous, without blemish, upright before Him, walking in His ways, diligent in the things, not giving place to the flesh. We see many things about that. You can't be doing things, you can't be lazy, slothful, the diligent are the ones that are going to, to see victory and the faithful, the ones that are going to be promoted. God is looking for us to come to the place of being the godly, faithful ones. And we'll go back, we'll close with this scripture. The one that we begin with this morning. Psalms 12.1 Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, ceaseth for the faithful fail from among the children of men. Faithfulness precedes promotion. If you aren't faithful, is God going to promote you? No. Are you going to be moving to the next place in the Lord, so to speak? No. Will you get promoted on your job if you're not faithful? No. It's not going to happen. God's looking for spiritual faithfulness in you and being a godly person. Put the Word of God first place. Walk in all of his ways. Make sure that you're, you're avoiding things you should, like the angry man. He's not going to have fellowship with him. He's not going to be around anybody that's, you know, that's walking wrong. If his lips aren't full of knowledge, he's not going to be in fellowship with him. Or bring a snare to your soul. Otherwise, we want to be the godly men, and the godly men are going to do what the Word says, and then God's going to work mightily in your life, and he's going to accomplish everything he purposes. You're going to get prospered. You're going to get blessed. God's going to be directing your steps. You're going to know what to do in every situation. And he's going to bring forth the things and bring the desires of your heart into manifestation because you have the wisdom of God, the direction of God. You have his desires on the inside of you, and he will bring forth good things for you in your life. Say this with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for the word of God that gives me understanding of the godly man. As I get godliness established in me, being faithful, having knowledge, and getting understanding and wisdom so that I walk in the ways of the Lord, speak the things he wants, does the things he wants, has the motivation of the Lord, does everything unto the Lord, God will manifest himself in the godly man and bring forth victory. And I will not allow myself 
to be contaminated by anything else as I'm walking in godliness and being faithful. God takes notice of the, God, of the faithful man, of the godly man. I thank you. As it says, you'll set apart the godly for yourself. I will be a godly one, and you will set me apart for yourself. You will prosper me. You will bless me. You will bring forth everything I have need of. There'll be no lack or want. You will bring forth your purposes, and you will prosper the work of my hands, bring the desires of my heart, and accomplish your great purposes that you have for me in my life. I thank you. I will be the godly person according to the word of God. And I will be a warrior. I will get mighty. I will be strong. I'll be full of power. And I'll make sure that I'm temperate. And I'm not going to let the flesh ever run me. I thank you that I will walk in the spirit in authority, conquer every enemy, and I will walk in victory. I thank you for establishing me as a godly man who will be set apart unto you for yourself. I thank you for accomplishing this work because I'm here in the doer of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. At Psalms 4, 3, the Lord set apart him that's godly for himself. That's quite a statement. God will set you apart for himself as we're godly. Put him first place. Meet these conditions of the word of God. Make sure you're doing things God's way. Separate yourself from that which is not of him. That's so important. Father, I thank you that we are going to be the godly ones. You said the godly cease and the faithful fail. That means the key will be being godly, being faithful, walking in the fear of the Lord, getting the knowledge, getting understanding and wisdom, walking uprightly, being the holy ones, being a hearer and a doer of the word. Father, I thank you that we will be hearers and doers of your word. And we thank you, Father, that we will be the godly ones, the faithful ones, and we will be set apart for you, and you will bring forth your blessings and everything that you, you desire for us to come to pass. You will prosper us, you will bless us, you will bring all your promises to pass, and we will be the holy ones that are godly and faithful before you. Thank you for much fruit as we hear and do your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God.